all right welcome back guys so we have this issue of repeating uh, file names which we want to get rid of and also if uh, you go to the uploads folder you will notice that uh, the files in here are simply in the uploads folder which means every user is going to be uploading their user files uh, the profile images and whatever they post in the same folder. This increases the chances that they might delete somebody else's data or the file names might collide. So to avoid this, we have to uh, create folders for each user. So the reason we are having this problem right here is because as you can see, there's only one file here. So that's why we have this. So we have to have separate file names, even though it's the same file that we uploaded. And also we need to create a folder. So I'm going to simply delete the uploads folder because I want PHP to create the folder itself. So to do that, I'm going to come here where it says uh, file name is equal to uploads. Okay, now before here, this is in the change profile image.php where it says everything is fine. So here we have to add something to create a folder just in case it doesn't exist. So first of all, I'm going to say folder is equal to, so let's create a folder here. We're going to say it's equal to uploads. And then we're going to concatenate the user's uh, user ID. Now we can easily get that because we already have user data at the top here, user data. So that always contains the, the row of the user in the database. So we're going to come here, I'm going to say row user data, I'm getting the user ID from the user data, like that. So folder is equal to that and the user ID, like so. And then I can put uh, the slash at the end, like so. So this becomes a folder. Now I have to confirm that this folder actually exists before I try to write anything to it, otherwise I'll have an error. So I can say create folder here. So let's check first if it exists. So we're going to say if file exists folder like that. So you use the same function to check if a folder or a file exists. Okay. Now the only reason we want to check if it doesn't exist. So let's put uh, an exclamation mark. If it does not exist, this folder, we're going to make it. So we'll say mkdir, let's make directory like that. And then let's put the folder name. Now this works just fine. However, we need to give it uh, some permissions, permissions to write to that folder. So to do that, the maximum permissions you can give is seven, 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 like that, four sevens. However, for security reasons, you can Google what this means, uh, file permissions, uh, there's extensive documentation on that. Now, for security reasons, we might want to leave the first one at a zero. That's much better. And then we are going to add a true at the end. Now, what this true is for is this is a subfolder that we're creating. In case uploads does not exist, uh, the true means create all the folders that are necessary in order to have this last folder that we want. So in case uploads doesn't exist, it will create it as well. That's what the true there stands for. So that way we are well organized. So that's our working folder right there. So we are done with uh, the creating of folders. Now we want to deal with the name duplicates, duplicating of names. So what I would like though, is when we crop the image, uh, let me come down here. So the file name here, instead of having file name is equal to uploads and file name at the end, we're just going to add folder here at the beginning. So the folder and the file like that. Okay, since that exists. And then what we want to do now is to change this file name. Let's create a, a random generated file name. So to do this simple task, 
we can either uh, get a class to do that for us which uh, it can do very well since we have uh, where is this class here move upload file and the class is created here image is equal to new image okay so instead what we need to do since we want to use that class over here so let's create the class at the top here right there so that we can uh, use it here to generate a name and then let's go to our image class here so we'll use this this same image class we just create a new function so it can uh, it can have a new functionality of creating a file name so we can put the function at the top or at the bottom it really doesn't matter so i'll put it at the top here i'll just say public function what we're going to call it is uh, generate file name you can call it anything you want uh, that's up to you so we're not going to give it any parameters so that section is going to be empty all we want it is to return some text return we'll create a, a variable called text so let's put that text up, up here let's set it to empty before we begin like so and then return text okay so we want a random uh, number so what I want to do is I wanted to choose you see it like the last time we did uh, we created a function that generates a random number however file files can be many in the directory you can have a thousand a million a gazillion files now to prevent uh, names or the the chance that a name will repeat itself uh, let's do something a little bit more extensive let me create an array here so I'm going to say array I'm going to call it an array I'm going to call it array so this is just a uh, what's this a variable name so you can name it anything however to create an array use the keyword array this is one way you can create an array another way is just to do this and put your values in there then it becomes an array same thing so don't worry about this so I'm going to add some numbers like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay that's it but the reason I'm doing this, instead of just telling it to give me some random numbers, is because I want to include uh, letters as well. So I had typed the alphabet uh, in advance because uh, this takes a little bit of time to do. So I'll simply copy that text and paste it here. So if you notice, let me zoom out. What I have done here is created an array with A, B, C, D, uh, small letters up to Z, and then capital letters up to uh, Z or Z as well so make sure because these are text you put uh, those inverted commas there as required so this is an array of all these items so this array is obviously uh, these are letters are 26 so 26 times 2 plus 10 so that's the total size of this array so i want you to be able to pick any random value from here either a number or a letter or and so on and so forth to create a very random uh, file name okay so to do that let it repeat uh, by the length of uh, actually what we might do is i might want to to suggest a length for this file name uh, right here so that's up to me I can say I can pass in the length I want this file name to be this long so let me just put in that value there so that I can do uh, I can create a different length uh, file names if I want to so just thinking ahead so here let me create a for loop so I'm going to say for let's create a variable called I this variable can be X it doesn't matter is equal to zero semicolon and then x for as long as x is less than the length okay loop and then for as long uh concatenate add to x like that so here we go 
So we have a loop that is going to loop depending on the number that we've put in there. Whether it's 10, we want it to loop 10 times and it will create a file name of that length. So every time it uh, loops, what we're going to do is generate a random number. I'm going to call it uh, run, rand or random. And then I'll use the function rand 0, 61. Now, the reason I've used 61 is because that's how many values are in here, memory locations from 0 to 61. So it's actually 62. So 0 to 61, select any of those and save it inside random and then add it to the text. So I'm just going to say text is equal to, so concatenate dot echo uh, array random. Oh, actually to access an array, you use the square brackets like that, I forgot. Okay, so if the random number is 20, so we are accessing location number 20, like this. So it will be one of the letters here, or a number, or whatever it is. So, this will create a very random string. So return the text when you are done. So all we have to do is call this guy, and we get our we get our file name. So here we're going to say folder and, so instead of using the name that came with it, okay, which uh, may have a JPEG at the end or PNG, but we know that we are dealing with JPEG, so we'll put a JPG at the end. So I'm going to say image, because we're returning something, like that. So the length here, uh, I think a good number could be, I'm not sure, uh, maybe 20, 15, depending on how long you want your file, the randomness of your files to be. So this connected to that. Okay. I think that does it. So let's see if uh, we have sorted out our problems now, because now we have a random num uh, random file and we have uh, a new folder. So if we come back here and check, the uploads folder doesn't exist. Quite all right. Now, before we even test uh, to upload, one problem has arisen here. If I refresh the page, you find that uh, the images are not showing because they don't exist. Now, this is normal because once you begin or you create a new profile, there won't be an image and a cover photo. So we need a placeholder there. So let me go back to profile.php. And right here where there's a placeholder, what we're going to do is instead of starting with an empty string, we're just going to give it the placeholder, right? Now the placeholders are, excuse me, are inside images here. But I've added one more here for the cover image, which is like that. So you can uh, get the link is in the description or you can download your own. So I'm going to drag and drop it in images so that we have those two. So let me come back here. And the cover image is called cover image. So images slash uh, cover underscore image dot jpg. Okay, so let's see if that works. If I refresh, we have a cover image, a dummy cover image there before we change it. And then there's the user female and the user male. So on this particular one, uh, actually on the profile image, we didn't set a maximum width and the maximum, uh, we didn't, did we set any? Oh yeah, we did set some styles here. Okay, so it's here that we are going to set. So we're going to say image, images slash, uh, what's the male version? User male. So assume it's a male, user underscore male dot jpg. However, if it's a female, uh, let's do something else. We are going to say put an if clause, if since we have the user data, so we can check if this user is male or female. If user data gender, like that, is equal to uh, female, 
then we change that to the female version. So first we set it to the male. If it's a female, change it to a female. And then if the file does not exist, we leave it at that. If it does exist, we change it to the file. So let me put female here like that. Just to make sure those are the file names, uh, user female, user male. All right, so this should uh, suffice. And there we go. So we have our male portrait and that. So now we can go in and uh, change these. Let me go and change cover. Where is this change cover change there we go change profile image there we go so let's go and check what's happening here if we go to here we will see that the uploads folder has been created and in here we have a folder for our user with the username as the folder name and then in here we have these files now these files don't have the file extensions and uh, that's 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 okay because the browser still recognizes them as images however you could if i go here in the change profile images right here where i generate this at the end i could concatenate a dot jpg like that if you must okay and also one more thing we can do to clean up once we change the profile image we should delete the old one because we don't actually need it for space uh, issues so right here when we say move uploaded file and here we are cropping the image now just before we crop the image let's retrieve the data and uh, unlink the file so we can say if file exists so we should always check if file exists before we try to manipulate it so if file exists now the file name we know is in user data because we haven't changed it at this point so user data uh, in here it's the cover image so we're going to say cover image if that file exists delete it so to delete you say unlink like that so we are unlinking this very file that way we don't have too many uh, profile old profile images that are no longer needed so we'll do the same thing here uh, for the profile image as well so replace cover with uh, profile like so all right, so we are deleting and doing a lots of things. What else do we need to do? One more thing that we need to do is uh, when I want to change the cover image, for example, I should see the old one here before uh, I change it. So we're going to do that in the next video. But for now, let's test this. Let me change it to this same one. Change. There we go. So now at least you see there's no collision anymore. So let's go back to the folder and we'll see that there are only two files here because the other one has been deleted. So if I change the profile image again, it will delete the other one. There we go. And so the other one has been deleted. So we still just have two of these guys. All right. So this is uh, awesome now. Everything is working out as planned. So I'll see you in the next video where we change something here. If we go to this point, I want us to see the image here. I'll see you in the next video.